Welcome to episode 14 of So You Want to Be a Star in the Music Business. Today's episode came from me picking up this month's edition of Double XL, which of course this is backwards, but for anybody that pays attention to hip-hop music and rap, this is the, the coveted edition, the freshman cover that comes out once a year. This is the fifth edition, which highlights um, up, upcoming artists in the industry that have pretty much garnered a buzz to the point where they feel they're kind of rewarding their current success and putting them in position and basically saying these are people to look out for in this year. So this year, right now, being 2012. So the way... They, they broke down, there's an article in the magazine that I want to share with everybody that I feel is relevant to anyone that's an up-and-coming artist. And they basically explain how the people that missed the 2012 cover, how do you get onto the 2013 cover? So there's a list of topics that they cover in here, which I feel are relevant for anybody who's trying to make moves in the industry. Yeah, and of course, it's not just being on their cover that's the goal. It's the fact that being on their cover shows that you have created a buzz and that you're moving your career to a higher level. Which is extremely important. And, and the, f the first topic that they mention is how to get, um, well, how to be at the position where you can even be at the point of getting on next year's cover. First thing is timing is everything. So that can be taken in a few ways. Um, hopefully you're already prepared. You always want to be in a position where when that time comes, timing is so important. You never know who you're going to run into. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know when somebody's going to say, okay, let me hear what you got. So timing, you always have to be prepared first. So the time, it could be um, something where you actually plot out your move for either awards, for showcases, for something where you already figured out by the time uh, this event happens or this situation happens, I want to be prepared and ready to go. So timing in the sense of your, your stuff needs to already be prepared and ready to go because when your time comes, that's it. And number two? Second one. While our phone is ringing. Uh -huh. You want to stand out from the crowd. So the second thing is going to be, what is unique about you? Is it your look specifically? Is it your sound? Is it your voice? So are you hitting pitches nobody else is pitching? Do you just sound and look different? It's just got to be something unique about you that stands out. So nobody wants to hear the same. You know, if you're a rapper, you know, everybody's talking about cars, clothes, girls the same topics? Are you coming up with different topics in your lyrics? So are you copying somebody's delivery? So make sure whatever it is about you that you stand out from everybody else. And along with that, we've had previous classes talking about image. That's it also. It's not, sometimes it's the music that has to be different, and sometimes it's the look, and some best it's both of them. Because we just don't need repeats of people we already like. Right. Number three. Third one. Quality control is what they call it. Um, just in the sense that it's, it's not about numbers, so nobody cares that you drop 10 mixtapes. It, it, it has to be something where the quality of your music is still standing out, regardless the the songwriting ability, the arrangements, the melodies, how, how good, the topics, let me go back to the topics again. Um, just overall, how good is your music? And most importantly, publishers, uh, labels, they will, they will always ask you if you have the opportunity to have them listen to your stuff, they're going to say, give me your best one or two. They do not have time. They're probably only going to listen to 30 seconds to a minute of it. And it better be what you know is the best one you've got. That's right. You don't need an entire CD of 10 or 12 tracks in order to submit it. You just need one or two great songs. That's a good point. Um, the next one, I guess we would say number four, is this one says collaborate, and I think that's a good point. Um, a lot of people, I think, get a little bit greedy, or maybe their ego's in the way, and they don't want to um, help anyone or have anybody listen to their song and get production credits on it. They don't want any co-writers, but I forgot how the saying goes, but I don't, I don't know. It's, it's better to have a small percentage of a lot than zero percent of everything. So if if what you're doing by yourself isn't getting the attention, it's time to feature on somebody else, get somebody on your song, work with other people, and don't be don't be scared to, to share the profits because obviously it might not be working just with you. Quick story. Uh, when I was 16, I was handed a publishing contract for songs that I wrote, but they said, look, we would like you to find someone to collaborate with. We think your lyrics are just a little bit immature, 
and you probably could get a little help by having someone work along with you. Well, my ego was in the way. I said, oh no, I'll just go back and fix them myself. And therefore, nothing happened with the songs. So again, uh, my lesson early on was, hey, maybe somebody actually could inspire me and give me some good ideas. There are plenty of great songwriters out there who have uh, one person did the lyrics, one person did the music, mm -hmm. one person did the tracks. Uh, you can also do it yourself, but sometimes two people with uh, contacts that are different and also end up with a better business plan. That's a good point, because a lot of people that you work with, they just make you, they may make you think better. So that actually helps you figure out who you want to work with, somebody that's helping to expand your thoughts and, and beliefs and stretch your sound a little bit more and just take you out of your comfort zone and just give you a, a, an open ear to help you perfect what you already do. Right. So Next. The, oh, I'm sorry. I know that's... <laughs> Next step. Get your city behind you. I like this one. Um, I've, I've learned a few years ago and always been told that you need to pretty much be big where you are first before you can be big anywhere else. And that, in a sense, could be just locally. You rep your city, whatever that is, or you rep your area or your community. So if you, you know, let's say you're... Uh, typically, hip hop and R and B, R and B, maybe more um, African American. So let's say you're uh, a white or Latino rapper. At least get your community behind you, also. So that makes for a big deal. So you, you don't have to get the entire United States buying your CDs for you to make an impact. What you do is stick with the community that you uh, that you love, that you like, that's in, that's in your area. And first get them to support you because then there are people looking at success within smaller pockets. Mm -hmm. And from them, they, they may come to you and say, hey, let's uh, work together to get you a little wider variety of um, fans. Uh, but first, you've got to prove you have any fans at all. And 10 fans or 50 fans is not going to get the attention of a label or of the wider public. And Mitch, that's a great point because people want to feel like they're part of a movement and a part of something. So mm -hmm. the more that you represent your hometown, your school, uh, the community or wherever you're from, the more people want to push you up because you, your success represents them and represents their success and they can feel proud of knowing you or supporting you. That's an excellent point. Um, next point. Get social, get digital. We're not going to beat that over the head. Uh, we've already discussed how important it is to increase your followership. It just basically shows that you, you have a reach. And any company or any person willing to invest money in you, um, it helps them automatically see that they get a return on investment because you reach a certain fan base already. And for those of us who are over the age of 25 uh, and who may be a little leery about joining the social networking world, get over it. Just try to find, look, I still hate it, but find a way to enjoy talking to people and giving them something worthwhile. Part of the reason we're offering these classes, uh, we don't get any financial uh, kickback from this. This is just try us trying to help talented people get ahead and uh, another way to communicate with our communities. That's right. And the last point before we wrap this up, they mentioned um, develop a relationship. And uh, I'm just kind of paraphrasing what they're mentioning, but uh, just network, develop relationships with people. Just make sure that you're, you're always on your A game and that your, your personality shines through. Continue to network um, and just, just make friends and, and supporters of as many people as you come across to. Just always be personable. And these are seven ways, as Kevin mentioned at the beginning, to create a buzz. Uh, a buzz is a very intangible product. You can't prove that somebody's talking about you. You can't prove that there's a group of people at a party that you don't know who are actually listening to your music or care about what you do next. Uh, but the buzz eventually reaches other people and you can feel good that you made an impact. So on that, keep going, keep the dream alive. Shout out today. Final shout out is to 368 Music Group, um, Dre the Mayor. Definitely congrats to Phil Day for his one page article in this month's Double XL uh, representing the DMV. So much success. Good luck for 2012. Um, I'm Kevin Curtin. Mitch Weiss. Check us out www.mwentgroup.com. 
And or, follow us on Twitter. Which is underscore MWEG. See you uh, tomorrow.